Well, good morning. Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Well, I'm, I guess the thunder rolls, baby. <laughs> it does. It does, man. It's a uh, prime prime planting weather out there right now. It's April twenty first. I think I initially had said on here I wanted to uh, plant some beans the first week of April. Yep. And here I am, a good twenty days deep, twenty one days deep, and I have not put a single seed in the ground. Yeah, I, I, which I don't know where we normally are as far as harvest, but I heard one of the reports I listened to that we're like 4% of corn planting right now, you know, as a country. So I'm like, Lord, where is that even at? South Texas, maybe? Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but, and unfortunately, I was watching a long range kind of ag forecast that I follow on YouTube last night, and he didn't give us much, much, <laughs> much to look forward to. Um, and it's not just that we've been wet. We've been cool. Yeah. Like, like we have, like, statistically, he was showing it. We've been cooler than average um, and I, and definitely, you know, much wetter than average. And he kind of laid it out. It looks like it's through the first week of May. Even. Dang, really? And he, and he was talking about the full corn belt where he said planting's really delayed. He said, you're going to see if this weather ever breaks and we finally warm up. It's going to be like a madhouse. He said it's going to be record planting speed you know as far as how fast we try to get the crop in the ground well that's what i i actually i talked to my my seed man there uh yesterday um i said man because i don't have my beans in yet um like typically we'll text them or call them be like all right i'm gonna try to plant tomorrow or the next day can y'all get my seed treated and bring it to me so i texted him yesterday and i said man i don't know if i do i need to go ahead and get my seed or y'all gonna be able to get it pretty quick and he said man he said as soon as you say you're ready we'll have it for you and i was like all right so that's how i am man like if i because we got a couple days here i've been looking which it has rained a lot more than i thought it was going to because initially i was thinking it was my phone was saying like a quarter of an inch oh yeah yeah i I do that too and i'm like okay yeah it's gonna rain tomorrow but it might not rain that much yep and then yeah <laughs> and now it's, yeah it's been rain it's freaking a swamp now so um i was like you know if we get a quarter of an inch because we had about three or four day stretch where it was no rain right and i was like by that third day i might can just you know it'd be like one of them things man i'd probably if the planter got a pretty new planter planter and tractor hang in there i would probably try to plan it all like in one day um that I got is them early beans. I mean, it would be, it'd be a pretty good day because it's about 220 acres um, that I'd try to plant in like a day. Yeah. Um, But that's what I told him. So they're basically sitting on ready so that I can put the hammer down as soon as it goes. Because, you know, we're still really good on, like for our area, and I'm only going to have 130 acres of corn. So, like, I'm not even sweating corn. You can plant it later these days, and it does really well as long as you get the rains. Um, only thing I'm even getting kind of stressed about is those early beans. I got yeah. those early beans that I want to well, plant. Right. And they were, of course, when it comes to, you know, the U.S. corn crop, they don't even, or yeah, corn. I don't know what I'm thinking this morning. They don't even worry about us. He was talking oh, yeah. like the corn belt itself. Yeah, and yeah we ain't a blip on the radar in that which, aspect. Which wet has been their problem, and it's also cold. And he was showing like the risk of like having significantly cold weather that could, you know, damage if they did have anything planted. It was like extreme risk for the next few couple of weeks. Yeah. But I see we're actually going to be in the 80s the next couple of days, but then early next week low 60s for highs yeah I mean, and, and down in the low 40s a night or two so yeah we're like actually getting kind of a spring well and I, I thought about that too i was like you know we always complain about we don't get spring you know, yeah we go straight from winter to summer i was like this is what spring actually feels like <laughs> yeah yeah and everybody's like this weather's terrible and stuff and i'm like well this is yeah normally we go from like winter time to like a sweatshop. So, I mean, yeah, it's, we're just, we're experiencing spring. And, uh, I had a guy last night at church. It was like, man, Logan, this weather ain't doing you no favors, is it? And I said, no. And I said, but you know, I said, man, I, I can mud a crop in worst case scenario. I can mud something in, but I said, man, if it's bone dry, you can't, you can't make nothing happen when it's just bone dry. So, yeah. you know, there's been years where it's rain and rain and rain and, 
Um, I mean, and you know, you'll have to leave sections out. Like we've, we've had to plant fields cause it was getting so, it was just stayed wet. You would have to just plant around mud holes and stuff, but you just, it's better to get the crop up and going. And that's kind of beans, especially they're more, they're a little more resilient. Like they can handle, they can handle not optimal uh, like conditions in the ground. Whereas corn, you know, corn, it's like imperative when you plant corn that you get a strong stand, it comes up quick. Like that's, that's pretty much what establishes your, how it's going to go for the rest of the year. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I, uh, today I won't be doing, I won't even be on the track of a day. I can't even, this is going to be so wet. Oh gosh. Yes. Yeah, I mean, got to, folks may be able to can hear the thunder outside literally, <laughs> yeah. uh, coming in through the microphone. It's a, uh, yeah, it's been a, been a wet start to the day for sure, but um, yeah, I, I was off yesterday afternoon. My kind of my typical Wednesdays nowadays is still have to go in in the mornings, and it was one of those days. It was just it, nonstop. Yeah, man. And which the veterinary industry has been, we've been at a breaking point or beyond a breaking point for a while, and I, I kind of hit my breaking point yesterday, and I was just like. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting out of here. I mean, it's just, and then I, this afternoon I was out on the farm. So of course I had the GoPro. I was talking, you know, for the YouTube and whatnot. And I was like, you know what? Like mother nature is a bitch that beats the hell out of human nature. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I will <laughs> deal with animals that don't do right. Weather that, that works. Seems like it's against you all the time. Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe yeah. that's my perspective because I, it is kind of more my side job and, and I, it's not my, my every day and I'm not living and dying with the farm like full timers are, but man, I was just, I was saying myself, I was like, give me mother nature. I will take that. Away. Oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to, I, I don't want to have to work with people. And I say that and it's like anything, like 95% of the people we work with are awesome. Yeah. Like go above and like, tell us how thankful. But it just doesn't take much. It was funny because after I dealt with a, a, an issue yesterday, I talked to like three other clients that, ha- of course, had no idea that I'd, and they were just so nice and appreciative. But still, it's like, <laughs> what, what what bothered me and all day bothered me more than I should have was the one jerk that I had to deal with. Yeah. And so, yeah, anyway. This is a typical thing, man. It's kind of like, it's like what, Joe Rogan talks about like why he don't read his comments. You know, I guarantee you 90, 95 or 98% of his comments are people that love his show. Oh yeah. But that like 1% or 3% or whatever that talks crap are the ones that you remember. Well, that's in like this, because it's somebody I've been working with. Like I have, like, I can't just, yeah. Delete, just ignore Delete them. the comment or, yeah. or, 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 or hit the ignore button or block them. Um, Yes, yeah, like, well, if I could have gone back in time, I would have refused to have ever done a favor for them in the first place and saved myself all, all this headache. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> that's uh, that's my rant on on my day job. But yeah, that's that's why I enjoy the farm so much because I get out there and I'm just like, yeah, forget about all that. Yeah. But that, that's kind of what what had kept me up a little bit last night. I didn't get as much sleep as I normally would have. You now you said you had a, an interesting evening or early I did, morning. man i did um like i said i'm i am extra tired this morning you know for for listeners if we're new we we we're growing uh the podcast is growing so we pick up quite a few new listeners uh usually episode and uh bobby lee and i record normal mornings like today at about 4 30 in the morning and uh about let's see so how should i this story so I was sound asleep, man. I was snoozing good. Like, and, and I'm not a great sleeper. Like I, I have insomnia from time to time. It all started when I became a farmer. Like my sleep is terrible a lot of times. And so when I'm sleeping good, man, it's, it's good. And so I was sleeping good and I had my phone on my nightstand and I always put it on vibrate at night just in case I get like an email or something. I don't want a, an alert going off. Well, I guess I might have to quit doing that because luckily I heard it like over there on the table and uh, 
I, I kind of jumped up and I looked over and I could see it lit up and ringing. And I said, oh, shit, I've done overslept. Bobby Lee's out there. And he's like, where are you at? <laughs> and so I pick it up and it's a buddy of mine that's a cop. And it's at one o'clock in the morning. Oh, Lord. And now I don't frequently get phone calls at one o'clock in the morning. So a one o'clock in the morning phone call is probably not a good thing. And then the fact that it's a police officer at one o'clock in the morning, I was like, oh, dang. Yeah, I'm going to answer this one. <laughs> yeah. And so I get up out of bed and I go in there and I, and I, I was like, hello? Because <laughs> like, I'm like startled awake. And uh, he says, hey, Logan. He said, man, uh, he said, you got, there's cows out. Um, we're, we've got, uh, they said there was two out. There's one out for sure. We're running her down the road right now. And so I ran over to the window and looked out and I could see all their bright lights and I could see this cow in front of the car and they were coming down the road out here. And he said, she's been in the road. And I said, well, just keep coming this way. And I said, try to see if she'll turn into the driveway. And I said, I got to, I was like, well, I'm in my underwear. I got to get get dressed and I'll be out there. And so he was like, all right. And so I stayed on the phone with him and, and she, she did turn and she was like, okay, she's coming down your driveway. And I said, just keep driving her, get her into the lot and I'll get out there and shut the gates. And, um, so I, I got dressed, I ran out there and they had just got her into the lot and we're like shutting the gates. And I talked to them and, uh, I said, I said, man, you know, I said getting a phone call at that time startled me. And he was like, well, he said, dispatch claimed there was two out, but we only saw one. And I said, well, dang, they were just fixing these fences out here. Uh, so I've been out on the track hoe and I said, but dad and them were working on these fences. And so I was like, just worked on them. Um, but I said, I'll, I'll lock the gate and I'll, all that and check it out. So they left and, uh, I, hell, I didn't have nothing but my phone. So I turned the phone flashlight on. I walked around a little bit. I never saw any cows. And so I went back inside and I got my two young bulls over here in the side pasture. Well, I get back inside and I get in bed and I'm probably at this point, I'm like still sleepy enough that I could probably go back to sleep pretty well. And my wife is like, is that Mo and it wasn't Mo or Curly, was it? And that's our two name. That's our names of our young bulls. And I said, "Well, I don't think so." But then I remembered one of them had been really hollering. Like last night, I got in bed and I was like, "What the heck are they hollering about?" So then I said, "Dang it, I need to get up and go make sure." So then I got up and I just put on a duster and slipped on some crappy shoes, and I had a flashlight and a shine, and they were both in the pasture just staring at me. So then I was like, I guess I need to really try to put eyes on this cow. And so I walked into the lot and it's, it is not raining at this time, but it's already just swampy and nasty. And I'm walking around, shining around and, and I see one cow. It's a younger calf. I don't know, probably 400, 500 pound calf comes into the little near the feed lot. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll, shut the gates and trap it in there. You know what I'm talking about? Where I can yeah. shut the two gates. And we got an area where we can drive through, but you can shut two gates and it would shut them in there. And I'm like, all right, good. It's coming in there. I'll shut it in there. So then I go over there. And again, I'm in, I'm in these, my old Sperry's that have holes in them. They're just wore out. I need to throw them away, but they're easy, quick. I was about to say, but you needed them. This yeah, morning. I did. They're easy, quick slip bones, but like I'm walking and the gravel is even crappy. And so, it's like mashing into my shoes as I'm walking and I'm like, gosh, dang it. And like it's one o'clock in the morning. I'm in, I'm literally in my underwear and a duster coat, uh, walking around out here and I go to shut the gate and I'm like trying to not step into massive puddles of water cause I'm in these shoes. And so I grab the gate in the middle and kind of go to pick it up and I just pick the damn thing up off the hinges and I'm like, God dang it. And so then the cow just takes off <laughs> running out of there. And I'm like, like I'm getting frustrated now. Yeah. And so I'm trying to put the gate back on the hinge and I get one hung. Well, then it is two. I see a second one come around the corner. And uh, so I shut that gate and I'm like, okay, I'll just go around and run them, run them in here and shut them both in there. Yeah. 
So I go around, step through a ton of mud. At this point, it's like getting up on my legs and everything else. And I've just pretty much like accepted that. And I get around there to shut the, to front them in there. And they're like 400 yards away back into the hay field. And at that point, I just said, F it and turned around and came back to yeah, the house. Just shut the main shut gates. The main gates. <laughs> they can't get back out on the highway. Nope. You can make sure you can, you can <laughs> finish wrangling them in the morning. So that, and then by that, by the time all that has taken place, I get back in bed now and I'm tired, but I am vividly awake at this point. So I laid there for a solid hour. So I, I think I finally dozed around three. And uh, then my alarm went off at about four o'clock. And see, that was I was <laughs> see, I woke up about three. I, I don't even know if it was the thunder that woke me up or one of the dogs. We got a puppy, and so it, it, I woke up. And he was kind of awake. And I was like, "Well, I better take him outside because he's not. He's kind of in the middle of house training." Yeah. And then I got back in bed, and I made the mistake of yeah, I was up just enough. My mind started running, and I laid there, and I was like. Are you kidding me? Because I, I knew <laughs> I couldn't cut shut my mind off. I think I fell asleep. I must fall asleep just a minute or two before my alarm went off. Oh, man, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> typical. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not. I have not been getting near enough sleep for the last probably several months, and yeah, uh, yeah I'm I'm an hour shorter than I should be today. Yeah, but whatever. Well, well there you go. It I was. Drop, I drink a lot of coffee. Yeah, more, more than I probably should. It was destiny then. Uh, because we both both are running on on fumes this morning. Now, now I'll tell you somebody that drinks some coffee now. That's your dad. Yeah, that that's man cool. drinks coffee all day long. He's coming over to the birdhouse. Like if we're, say we're around the birdhouse, it'll be three o'clock in the afternoon. He's drinking coffee. Shoot, I'll do that. Really? I, I don't do that <laughs> daily. But between my wife and I, we drink probably not a full two pots. A day? I have, to, I have to make a second pot before I leave the house because she's, coming back home after she gets done with the kids and like there won't be any coffee when she gets back. And, yeah. And then, yeah, when I get to work most days, I'm going to, if there's not some already made there, I'm going to make some. Heck, I'm, I may have even mentioned on here, like if we go to, and it's rare that my wife and I get out to Memphis, when we get done with dinner, I'll usually ask them like, can you do a coffee to go? Really? Like, I'll drink <laughs> coffee. On, um, just because well, if we go to Memphis. We got a forty-five minute drive back home, and Dang, uh, so you don't get. Do you get jittered? Now, if I drink enough, like, but if I just drink one cup, like after dinner, especially you know, I'm just eating a full meal. I'm about ready to crawl in bed and go to sleep anyway. It's, yeah, that that one cup won't won't jack me up too much. I I have come to realize I think I have a low tolerance for stimulants. Yeah, I told Marcy that because. Uh, between the coffee and the cocaine that I do, like both <laughs> affect me very heavily. No, <laughs> but um, no, on the the coffee, man, I I I've I drink twelve ounces of. I've got we use our Keurig, and I know the K cups are like your big coffee people think those are like the spawn of Satan. It's like the crappiest coffee, but it serves the purpose. And I'll drink 12 ounces of that. And then I actually have some decaf pods because I love coffee. Like I, yeah. I could drink it all day, but I'd be like an anxious, jittered up, like dude, if I drink a bunch. If I drink just a bunch of coffee, especially if I'm not eating much either, like yeah. I, I can feel myself getting a little jittery. But. Well, seeing you do eat a big breakfast. See, I, a lot of times I don't eat breakfast. Yeah, I, so, I try to eat a big breakfast every day. Oh, uh, if. I don't know. And I brew it different. Like if I do it with the Chemex, it's pretty stout. Yeah. And uh, so. I don't even know how big this cup is. It's got to be at least a pint. It's probably 20 ounces. Yeah. I fill that up. Oh, gosh, I don't know. And then like if I'm around the house, like I'm drinking out of just my mug. Yeah. Um, you know, like when I'm eating breakfast and, you know, you know, getting ready for work and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'd be afraid to say how many ounces of coffee I drink in a day, <laughs> but yeah, I, I do enjoy it. Well, that's how I am, man. I'm the same way. Um, well, we do have a listener question. All right. Um, you got anything else you want to add on any of that? No, no, I think, yeah, the weather is working against us right now, but that's okay. It is, man. That's the, the name of the game with farming. That's what I always say. You gotta, 
it's always a battle some, sometimes. I will tell you one thing that it seems like, and I'm probably going to jinx it myself by saying this, but typically, typically it goes in two ways for us on the row crop side. You either have hell planting it, and then it's smooth sailing in the harvest, or you have smooth sailing planting it, and it's hell in the harvest. Right. And in all honesty, I'd probably rather have hell planting it than I would harvesting it. I say that like because planting it, I do believe a planter. I was talking to Mr. Gerald Wayne actually the other day, and you know he farmed years ago, and me and him were talking about the price of equipment and how terrible it's gotten. And uh, he was like, only thing new we ever owned or, or had pretty new was a planter. And I said, man, I'm the same way. That's my newest, by far, the newest piece of equipment I own is my planter. And, like, if you don't get a good stand, you don't get it planted and get all that done, that pretty much sets the bad pace from the start. So, yeah, you know, I, I say I would rather have smooth sailing in the harvest. I don't know. Um, that's hard yeah. to say. Because Depends on the day. It know. does. It does. We've had such bad harvest before that, like, you know, half the stuff's popped out by the time you can harvest it. So half of the harvest versus, a, yeah, you know, it, it's definitely pros and cons to both. Well, and you kind of remind me of something. One more thing on the weather, because obviously we're, we're just talking about how wet we are right here in the Mid-South. You, know, you still get over, you know, west of us. I mean, pretty much the western half of the U.S. still in a pretty bad drought. Yeah, all up through the Plain states. But we had mentioned that that big blizzard across eastern Montana, North Dakota. They've been so dry, and I know everybody on social media, you know, puts out, you know, everything's lovely and wonderful on there. But I don't know anybody in that part of the country really. But just seeing on social media them talking, pretty much every one of them was like, "Yeah, this blizzard kind of sucks." Yeah. We're so happy for it because they, they needed moisture. the moisture so bad. Yeah, they were pretty much said, "You know, we we can deal with the blizzard, like, but if there's no moisture, like, we, we were gonna have no grass this spring and summer, and we were gonna have to sell off part of the herd, you know, all the herd, whatever." And so, yeah, that, I thought that was amazing. Like they were pretty much all of them were like, "Oh, thank God!" Like we're so happy to get this yeah. blizzard. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh man, like you can see these pictures. Of course, they they always post the. The most shocking photos. Like, yeah. God dang. Like drifts are like as high as the, like you can barely see the roof of the barn in some of these cases. And yeah. Like, well, there's a lot of moisture put back in the ground for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That night, and they were just desperately in need of it. So yeah, I hope it, I hope it does help them out. But well, that's man, that's how, I mean, that's exactly how I feel. Like, uh, you can, I mean, with a, with what the planners were running today, um, you know, if it was still back when we're running 15 foot drills, you know, man, you can hit it as hard as you want to. You still ain't making a lot of ground. Nowadays, we're running 40 foot planters. I mean, planters 40 foot wide and beans, I can plant beans pretty fast with that thing. And I mean, you know, you can cover probably, shoot, I don't know, 21, 22 acres in an hour. I mean, that's a that's light years beyond what it used to be. Like I I can remember when I started helping them on the farm planting with that fifteen foot drill, dude. You'd plant them for hours and it'd feel like you planted ten acres. Yeah. So nowadays, man, yeah, you can plant twenty something acres in an hour. That's what I say. Like I got a two hundred acre two hundred acre farm. If I can, if it's dry enough, and I can get started on it pretty good and early. It's pretty wild to think, like, with one planter, I could plant 200 acres or more in one day. If nothing breaks down. I know. <laughs> I know. And that, that's that, that first day or so, you know you got some kinks that are going to always on, worked out. I'm always on pins and needles, man. Like, it, it's – I can't – I don't know that I'll ever be in a position where I could buy new – Um. My planter is pretty new. It's 2018. It's only been over like four or 5,000 acres, which is like nothing on these planters. So it's pretty, it's as new, dang near new as I will probably ever have. Um, unless 
unless talk dirt to me just starts bumping and rocking and rolling and they call and like, Hey man, we'd like for you to use this new planter. Yeah. Then I'm probably, yeah. Like if case H listens to the podcast, man, cause I'm a, I'm a green tractor guy, but I'm a red planter, man. So send me a red planter case. Uh, I'll, I'll put the hammer right, down and, and put it on the back of a red tractor and, Hey, I'll he'll, even try it. Yeah, I'm not. He'll run all red on a demo. Yeah. I will. Yeah, even bring me a red combine, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, that you, it's just it's pretty wild how far we've come. Like, yeah, yeah, if it'll hold together, man, you can plant the shit out of some ground in a hurry. So that's kind of I'm sitting kind of like finger on the trigger, like waiting. Planters hooked up. I've only got it swapped over. It's ready to go. Um. All I need is a little bit of dry. And I will say one good thing, the ground that I'm going to plant, it's all good flat ground. It really doesn't have that. There's not a lot. There's a few little wet spots possibly, but overall it's pretty good flat drain good ground. Run. So, I mean, I'd plant maximum overdrive on that one over there. Yeah. Well, good deal. So, yep. Raining, man. I'm thinking of the Credence, uh, Credence Clearwater song. Yeah. Who will stop the rain? <laughs> yeah. yeah All got- right. We got a, uh, so we got a listener question here. Appreciate it. Always appreciate the listener questions. Um, again, go to talkdirtpodcast.com. Go to our contact. And it's super easy. You put your name, email. It's got a phone number section there. You don't have to put your phone number. Right. Um, which we do want your social security number and credit card information. Yeah. Um, but uh, just kidding, guys. But uh, go in there and send us a question, anything. I don't even care what it's about. You don't even have to be ag-related if you just like oh, yeah. hearing us talk about something. Um, grazing cover – well, this is from Mr. Justice, um, and he says, grazing cover crops would be a topic I'd like to hear more on. Now, this is relatively – new territory for both of us right and we we had hit on it a little bit last week and i was actually i talked with somebody at church about it this past week too just we were talking about cover crops and how you know in some parts of the country they really can graze them and yeah i think our biggest limitation of doing it is almost all of our row crop ground is not fenced like it's not it's not ready you can't just open the gate and let the cows out there once you got your cover crops are or established and up and you know the forage is there yeah um two i know because there's a lot of cost share through like the nrcs i don't know how much they allow allow it now and actually one person i was talking to said you know they don't they don't usually even get the cost share they just put it in on their own yeah so yeah it doesn't matter they can do whatever they want to with it um but yeah same thing you know do you we just don't have the, the, I don't know what percentage, but the vast, vast majority of the row crop ground in this part of the country, it's not fenced. You know, maybe it was never in pasture or it's been so long since it was in pasture, the fences are, are gone or yeah. in such disrepair. But yeah, you know, one person I was talking to, they, they rent a farm from a guy who used to have a lot of cows and then he downsized. And so he started renting some of his old pasture ground out to them to row crop. And, um, but it was still fenced, and so that's what he would do. They they really? plant a cover crop, and then about this time of year, when that'd be he, great, he'd graze it. Because um, you're getting a, I mean, it's a ton of benefit to that. I mean, like, I mean, you know the the crap. I mean, the animals walk around crap and pee and all that, and that's that's great. Oh for yeah, the ground. Well, it's the whole. I don't remember which law of physics it is, but matter can neither be created nor destroyed. You know, they're, you know, they're. They're just taking that cover crop and putting it right back in the ground in the form of manure. I guess some of it is leaving when that animal leaves because the animal's obviously putting on weight. Yeah. But um, the, uh, yeah, I, I, I would, you know, be lying if I said I hadn't really thought about how we could maybe do it more. And just, yeah, using temporary fencing because, I mean, we've got some, we've got some big blocks of ground, you know, yeah. between ground you work, ground our dad's work, where you think, man, you know, you could, you get a cover crop out there on, you know, several hundred acres in one block and dump some calves out there, you know, in the early spring when that's you got some rye or something that's already up, yeah, you know, pretty tall. And, you know, man, that, but it's, 
like how logistically do we make that work? You know, do you, and, and again, with it being me doing it on the side, like I, I don't even begin to have the time to do it. Yeah. Um, and well, then you having, you know, a lot of places they have those temporary corrals. Yeah. You know, that it's all, you know, hydraulic, you know, it unfolds, you know, it folds all up on like a gooseneck and pull it wherever you yeah. want to. You see, well, some of the lot of YouTube guys that I watch, you know, especially out West, just to see how they do things differently. Yeah. They, they may have cows grazing all over during the winter. Sometimes even just on corn stalks, not even a cover crop. They just take that. I've seen that. Yeah. I've, to yeah. a field, you know, they put it on a, but all this pasture like has good perimeter fence and, but they don't have to have a, that way they don't have to have a gathering pen. Every yeah. Year. They just take that portable one with them, gather them up, load them up and, you know, get them off there in the spring or whatever. When it's time it's to something I, I would be really interested in doing it. Um, yeah. It's, it's, <clears throat> there's, there's a lot of barriers. I mean, right here. Yeah, I think our biggest one is that, yeah, we farm so many little blocks. Yeah. Like, it would be better yeah, if you had, I mean, all your land kind of right there in one spot. You didn't have to worry about loading up cows, hauling them here and there and everywhere. You just run out of time doing that. But Yeah. it uh, yeah, From a feasibility standpoint, you know, as far as the soil and, and benefiting the animals, you know, yeah, you can really just see where it would, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. Um, like, I, I've got a... Like I'm thinking of a farm right now that I got like and it's it's a bigger block for me. It's a hundred and eight acres. That's what I row crop. Overall the farm is like three hundred acres. Um uh, and the thing I'm thinking about too then would be the shoot some of them get in the woods, uh, you know, like if they kind of come time to get them out of there or something, might take you a while to even track down all these jokers. Yeah, well and that's like you would in my experience, like with our stockers, of course, we're just dumping them out on permanent pasture. Yeah, you, you're going to need to have a spot, you know, where you're feeding them probably every day, getting them coming to a feed bump. Yeah. That way when it does come time to gather them. And then, like, with our soil and how much rain we get here, that's another thing I thought probably keeps us from doing here. Just like we've been complaining, it stays so wet here through the winter. Yeah. Like, they're going to track up a lot of our crops. Like, a lot of places, they graze wheat. You know, yeah. not, not even cover crop wheat, like wheat they're going to actually harvest. And, you know, there's a, you know, up to a point you can graze it without hurting your yield on the grain. Yeah. Then you get those animals off there. But it's usually in areas that don't get near the rainfall we do. So they're not trampling it down. Yeah, yeah. Bad. Like around here, like, because I think of a lot of the big farms we got, and a lot of them are like creek bottom ground and stuff. And I'm like, they would tromp all that into the ground. Like, yeah. You, there's like... I just don't see how that would work at all. And yeah, if, if you had feed bunks out there to feed them in, oh, it would just, you'd, you'd have to be constantly moving your say, feed yeah. bunks because it would turn into just a quagmire. So I don't mean to make it sound like I'm coming up with all the reasons not to do it, but it's something that depending on different parts of the country, it's more feasible than others. But yeah, yeah, like out through like the, um, you know, Oklahoma, Texas, you know, driving through there. Yeah, they graze a lot of wheat there. Um, and it's pretty neat because, yeah, and then they'll still harvest it. And, yeah. And uh, that's uh, that, that definitely intrigues me. Um, I, I'm sorry I'm not enough of an expert to, to really well, go to it. Maybe in the coming years. It's, uh, you know, I've, I've thought about, like, like my, even if you couldn't do, like, even if you did, like sections out of the field and you didn't do the absolutely every square inch of it, you know, you're still going to gain some benefit on that ground, obviously. And so I, I've thought about, you know, you see these guys running the electric fence. I wonder how much if you ran like a two strand and obviously like we've talked about before, you would need kind of a herd that you know the attitude of and you'd want a more docile group for that. Um, but I'm wondering like, how expensive would it be one to run like a pretty big two strand hot wire around? Yeah. I'm sure there's probably figures out there like extension service or whatever, what you're going to spend, you know, per foot. I know yeah. They, I know they do for, you know, permanent fence. Cause I've, I've had to explore all that, which, you know, I've talked to people who are in bigger dairy country. And of course, you know, if you're dairies, you know, a lot of times they keep their heifers, Yeah, but the bull calves or steers, you know, they have to do something with them. They, you know, they graze them out, they end up being beef. Um, but those calves are always super gentle because they're bottle raised. Yeah. Uh, and so, 
actually one of my brother's buddies, they talked about that, where if you get some some dairy steers, like, it, you know, especially if you're in a situation where your fences aren't Real quite great. as good as you, you want them to be, or you're going to trust them behind a just a hot wire, like, that, for those animals, it can work really well. Um, so that's kind of another angle, potentially. But, uh, yeah, there's there's all kinds of different ways to, to kind of think about it and, and go about it. Um, but yeah, trying to, you know, the whole regenerative ag, you know, trying to use, you know, mother nature together, you know, and cut down on fertilizer and, and whatnot, especially as inputs and all go way up. And then too, it's just another revenue stream. Yeah. You know, if you could, you know, if you could row crop, you know, through the growing season and then plant a cover crop and then, you know, put a load of calves out on a cover crop for a few months, put a little weight on them then sell them. Yep. And, you know, make a little money on that weight they gain. Hey, that's it's another potential revenue stream. But Yeah, it's, uh, I, man, you know, like I've said before, like I, I'm really, I've been really intrigued by this regenerative ag thing. Like I was actually looking yesterday because I, I had, I didn't have a ton of acres in cover crop this past year. I've got a pretty significant amount in it coming this year. Um, now it's, I'll say too, for anybody like listening that maybe, is a farmer or a young farmer and wanting to get into it. Uh, NRCS, they do offer the crop share, like cover, not crop share, but uh, they'll pay a set amount per acre for cover crop. Now, I'm a young farmer. I'm still I'm still within, I think I have like two years left. You got a 10-year time span where you're still, when you start using their young farmer program, you have 10 years. Uh, before you age out and i mean it doesn't matter i guess like even if i don't know if, is there an age limit like can't you go if you're like 50 and still i don't know yeah statistically <clears throat> you'd still be a young farmer but, yeah yeah but um i don't know what the age that like the maximum age where you can start and well, it, still be gotcha. part of that program yeah i haven't looked on that either but i know like you have 10 years um as long as you've been farming like running your own operation 10 years or less and um uh, NRCS will pay because I'm in the young farmers thing. They have two prices they'll pay per acre. I mean, it's a pretty substantial difference. Like the standard one is, I think they'll pay probably $45 an acre. This is our area. I'm sure it, it varies other places, but NRCS will pay about $45 an acre. Um, if you're in the young farmers program, it's like $76 an acre. And, uh, to help you cover seed costs. And yeah. Whatnot. And I'll go ahead and tell you, you don't pay near that to do it. So yeah, you, you make money doing it. Um, it it must have been a different program that I looked into one year, but it was you would get a certain dollar per acre if you planted just one species. It seemed like it was like $15 an acre. if you. That's one. probably equip or something. There was one that did not pay as much. Well, it still was pretty much pretty good. Like I was like, yeah. that's going to cover my seed. Or it was like twenty five dollars an acre if you planted multiple yep. species, and I was planting like four different. Um, they kind of irritated me. But I didn't qualify. I I had some ground I was rotating. We were planting a summer annual, yeah, but to graze like we weren't. It wasn't a traditional corn or soybeans, but still it was an annual crop. And so if I didn't plant anything for a cover crop in the fall, just like a bean field or a corn field, anything, it was going to lay fallow all winter long. Yeah. And so I, I applied for it, planted my cover crop and whatnot, and they came out and looked. They're like, well, this doesn't qualify. I was like, well, why? And they're like, well, I think I'd have like Sudex or something planted. So like, what's what, like, what does that <laughs> matter? Like, I, it's an annual crop, just like corn would have been. You know, it's yeah. not that different than corn, really. It's a, another yeah. grass crop. Uh, but I think that was more, I mean, obviously, like 99.9% .9 of people around here that are doing cover crops, it's following cotton or corn or soybeans. Yeah. And, and it just wasn't set up. And I was like, well, they probably need to change this. I know I'm, I'm like the, the extreme outlier that I'm, <laughs> I'm planting an annual for grazing. How many people do that? And I don't do it anymore. That was a few years ago, but well, that I, it wasn't, I, it wasn't a huge amount of money cause it was only 20 acres. Still, I was like, why wouldn't this qualify? Like yeah. it, 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 all the benefits are the same. Well, that dude, that's so I, when I had it done, cause when you get it done, the guy, they give you like, I don't know. They give it a little time for it to come up and they go out and check and make sure that you got everything and you got to send them the receipts. And that's how the, they had a, 
I think it was five species or less. I, I can't remember how it was. It was the the higher paying one. Uh, you had to have five species or more, and so I had, and I and they they sent me what their recommendation because I'm new to it, so I'm not like experimenting and with you're my talking own yet. Five plant species. Yes, you're putting after radishes, radish, turnip, crimson clover, wheat, and rye. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, you know, what's the standard thing? Because again, I'm not. I'm so new into it. I'm not going to start experimenting yet. Like I yeah. once I get kind of the feel and i'll start diet now i'll start dissecting okay what does this plant do what does this plant do and i go from there but i really did like the turnips a lot and all those but um anyways it was funny i just sent that receipt to my seed guys and was like this is what i need and then we we had it flown on you have a date that you have to have it done by and it's earlier if you fly it on if you're going to plant it then you got a later date so i guess they give you a little more window but um i had it flown on and the guy i sent i sent the receipt to uh to nrcs and they were like ah man i can't remember they when they wrote up the receipt there was like one thing was left off and the thing it was like a very i can't remember it might have been the turnips uh but it was a the rate was very low already. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that, it was, that seed is tiny. Yes, like it was a very low rate, and uh, <laughs> so they just forgot to itemize it on the receipt. Yeah, it, it was in there, but they it didn't. was in there. But uh, but like I didn't hell, I didn't know. I just sent it to them like, man, I don't know shit about this stuff, uh, yeah. cover crop stuff. So, uh, and they had a company that like does cover crop seed because most of our cover crop seed comes from like. I think North Dakota, South Dakota, like it's not from around here typically. Yeah. And um, so they, uh, NRCS called me or one of the, the dude texted me from NRCS. And I was like, bro, this doesn't qualify. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And he was like, you, you don't have but four species and you got to have five. And I'm like, I just sent them exactly what you sent me. And so then I texted, called my seed guy, and I'm telling him, and I'm like, he's like, man, I gave them exactly what you gave me. And uh, and so then I, I called them back at NRCS. I'm like, man, I, and and we went back and forth and back and forth. And then uh, my my seed guy was like, you mean to tell me that they ain't gonna they ain't gonna qualify you because of this effing thing? <laughs> like it's like barely anything in the mix. And he was getting fired up, and I'm like, yeah, it's, like a- it's like one percent of the, of the yes. total. Yes, yeah. I mean, it was a. I wish I could remember the rate because it was kind of hilarious. Yeah, because that which that seed, it's still a lot of seed. But yeah, it's just it's so tiny. It is on a volume basis, it's not much. But it was actually in there though. It was so that's what then my seed guy got to he he got to reaching out more, and they had it in there. They just Somebody didn't. had just forgot to put it on the bill. Yeah. So then they just they sent me the new bill. And it had it on there, and I sent it to them, and they were like, got it. And they went out and checked, and they were like, yeah, it's out here. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, the other thing. I was like, well, all right, let's just wait a couple of months, and you'll be able to go out there and see it. See all five species. Right? Yep. And so, uh, yeah, for a minute, I was like, you got to be kidding me. But uh, I like it, man. I went out yesterday. I, man, you know, I'm used to, uh, if you don't have something planted on a farm, I'm used to the typical, like, you might have Poana in the wintertime or something, but it's like still pretty much just a dead field more or less. And I'll tell you what, man, I've had like a big major change in, in my mentality because the farm I got over here that has cover crop on it, it's like, I mean, it a lot of the stuff on it right now is probably 14 to 18 inches tall right now. Yeah. And there's crimson clover that, and that's just pretty to me. Crimson oh, yeah. clover shining I'll, out there. It is. It looks I've awesome. Got a, I've got a bunch in a few of my pastures. Uh, yeah. On our farm where we run our stocker steers. Yeah, it's oh, it's pretty when it's all bloomed out there on the hillside. Yeah. And so that's what I was even looking because Dad and I were talking. And, I mean, like again, we're, we're both have never – he's never done any cover crop. He's going to have some this year. Uh, so I actually even got the jump on him last year. But – um, he was like, you need to get in there and burn it down. 
but I don't know that I'm going to get in there and burn it down. I'm thinking about planting it green. Yeah. And actually, today I'm expecting a call from Yetter. They make row cleaners and stuff, and they got roller crimpers that mount on the front of the planter. Yeah. And I've been watching, man, YouTube. I've been watching some YouTube on these roller crimpers, and these guys have them mounted on the front of their planter. They're like spring loaded, and it just rolls and crimps the stuff down, and you plant right through it. I mean, I planted, and this is one of the shout outs for red planters, man. Like, um, I planted some stuff two years ago. It was a field we just had not gotten to, and we had gotten kind of behind. And uh, it was a wet, I think, wet year. And I planted a field that had, it used to be a hay field, so it had a lot of fescue and stuff in it. I say hay, but it had fescue in it. And um, uh, They do fescue hay. Some folks do. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was, pro- I was planting and stuff probably three foot tall all on there. I mean, you couldn't. There was no like getting off and hardly checking anything. You're just planting and you're just hoping the planter's doing what it's supposed to do. And I had some of the best beans I've ever had on that. Yeah, well, there might be something to that. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, the biomass, you get a ton of biomass and then it's even the ground stays, it stays cool and it typically stays kind of damp. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Yeah, I, the ground stays covered like it's supposed to, but yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of the whole idea behind it. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, you experiment with it more and more, and then you get to where yeah, I don't even think I need to terminate this, or I don't, I don't need to spray it. You know, we yeah. can terminate it with crimper, which into a lot of those species, they don't. You know, they're they're cool season, they're winter annuals. Yeah, you know, they don't. They're not going to grow through and, and compete with your crop. Yeah, you know, through the summer months anyway. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good question. We something we'll probably keep revisiting as we especially you dive more and more into the cover crop world and i don't know maybe well, maybe I, we'll get a hurricane creek farm collab yeah and you can start running your livestock and i'll i'll just you, let you, you do plan that. it and get it fenced for me <laughs> <laughs> you do all the hard work and i'll bring you some cows <laughs> hey, i got a story i forgot to share all right. um it's a listener of the show he commented this was a month ago uh mr philip edwards apologize if i had, he's commented it was when you talked about the vodka Okay. Um, <clears throat> Dominic. Yeah, he, he said, your American vodka uh, manufacturer selection reminded me of a story my uncle told me about riding around in Birmingham, Alabama with his grandfather one day in the 60s. When my And I asked him, if it, I said, can I share this on the podcast? He said, yeah. So he said, when my uncle stopped his pickup truck at a light, a bottle of vodka from the night before rolled out from under the seat against my great-grandfather's shoe. He picked it up and asked my uncle, what is this? Concerned about what his grandfather might think about it, my uncle sheepishly told him it was vodka. However, he didn't. He needn't be concerned as the old man took a big swig, smiled, and said, that vodka is smooth. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> it is. I said, I got to share that. <laughs> so, yeah. I got another little story. <clears throat> We're coming up on time but uh my wife actually kind of reminded me of this one and it ties back in to something that you had brought up a week or two ago about the the avian influenza the bird yeah, flu yeah. that was damaging some you know some turkeys and, and chicken you know herds and or not, herd flocks here i am a cattle guy <laughs> but we uh this past saturday you know shocking it was raining yeah but what was actually shocking is we weren't at a softball tournament. So we were, you know, being Easter weekend, we were all around the house. It was raining. It was nasty. Well, the Grizzlies, Memphis Grizzlies NBA team had their first playoff game. It was a two thirty tip off. I was like, well, gosh, it's raining. We've been telling the kids we're going to take them to a game sometime, but they're all, you know, 90% of the games are at night. Like, the stars have all aligned. It's a home game, middle of the afternoon on a Saturday. We're home. We're going. Yeah. So we loaded up and went and, we had kind of nosebleed seats. So we're up high, and I didn't even really see much of it when it was going on. But there was kind of a disturbance down there on the court. Um, I kind of assumed it must be like a medical emergency or something with a fan. Yeah, but the, you know, because you can see like security gathered around, and all of a sudden they like pick this person up, and just towed them out. And everybody's like cheering. <laughs> it's not like cheering, like yay, they're they're taking care of them. It's like, no, get that jerk out of here. Oh uh, yeah, I was yeah. Like, oh, okay, so it's like somebody was drunk and wanting to fight or something. Yeah. Whatever. I, I never, I didn't think about it again the rest of the game or really at all until 
just a couple of days ago, my wife was laughing. She said they were talking about that on the radio. She was like, it was a protester, an animal rights activist. Oh, jeez. I was like, what? And she said, yeah, they they were wearing a shirt, or they were claiming that that um, what's his name? I think it's Glenn Taylor, who's the owner of the Timberwolves, the team we were playing. Yeah burns animals alive and i was like what <laughs> like i've got to like i'm diving into this a little deeper and so i got to research it and so he he apparently like he owns everything like i mean if you own yeah. the nba team you own a, bunch a lot of stuff. of stuff yeah uh you didn't make your money in the nba but it, apparently one of the things he owns is some commercial chicken farms and it was apparently you know i guess the claim was that one of his flocks or you know had to be euthanized Burned, yeah. or whatever because of bird flu which I never even could find whether that was true or not. But apparently this protest has gone on at several of their locations. Yeah. I guess, of course, at one of their home games would make more sense. But yeah. there's a woman, she tried, I don't know if she was successful, but she chained herself to the basket. It's like, <laughs> Lord, it's like she spent a ton of money to get a seat that close, first of all, because that's why we were sitting nosebleed. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I thought that was funny, but but what she, my wife was getting a kick out of it, and what had them bring it up on the radio, which because it wasn't even sports talk she was listening to, and uh, it was one of the female radio hosts on a uh, one of the classic rock stations here. It was like, why do all these protesters? They all fit the same profile. They're like, pretty much her point was they're all hideous. Yes, <laughs> my yeah. wife's like, <laughs> kind of is, and I'm like, yeah, because before I even saw a picture of the woman, you know, just in your mind, you build a picture. Yep. You're like, all right, she's gonna be probably mid forties, you know, at least middle aged, overweight, pale white woman. Yep. And and yeah, just not very attractive at all. And they yeah. were joking, they're like, all these people they all fit that exact profile. And it really doesn't matter if they're animal rights activists. No, yeah. Or feminist or environmental activists. Like they all fit. <laughs> and not that there aren't some some weirdo dudes that do the same thing. <laughs> because there absolutely are. And, and yeah, they pretty much fit the same profile, just the man. Yeah. But uh yeah, my wife's like, it was pretty hilarious because, like, she's right. Like, yeah. like, you knew exactly what the person was going to look like before you even saw the picture. It, dude, it, it's, yep. I mean, it is. And I, and you just made me think there was an, a, like an abortion video going around and I saw this weekend and it was like some people that are pro abortion on there and they literally looked exactly like what I expected them to oh, look yeah, like. You already know before you even get there. But- like, some of them have like a shaved head and they'd be super pale. Another one had blue hair, super pale, and they were all like kind of well, gross that's looking. And it's it's like they're almost like, you know, I know you've talked to another podcast with people who have been involved, like in around like the Capitol. I believe it was Capitol Police. Office. Yeah, yeah. All these protesters and activists, they're all the same. A lot of times, it's the same people. Like they literally are paid to do this. Yeah, but um, yeah. The story got even a little more ridiculous because as I was researching it, that guy doesn't even own the team anymore. Oh, really? He's, so He sold the team a year ago, last April. <laughs> and and I've, some people were saying, well, he's still affiliated. Like, there's still a link there. And so they're still just about, I was like, whatever. That's reaching. That's Which, reaching. They're doing it for attention. And here we are giving them more attention. So I, I do. I, I, the irony there is not lost on me. So we didn't just laugh at those people. Well, if you're in a I game, thought they did a really good job at the game. Because, of course, they would not show it on the Jumbotron. Yeah. I really didn't know. I was like, was it a streaker? Like, what, what was going on? Yeah. Like, you could tell it was something. Well, that's what I was like going to say. A lot of times, those real awful, ugly ones get naked. Yeah. Well, this one, she was just trying to chain herself to the basket. One of their, the other protests, because was they got to Googling it, looking it up, somebody had tried to glue themselves to the court at one of their other games. What? Glue themselves to the court? Yeah. I mean, it's just... Like it is funny because there was a picture of that one, and like the players are just standing there, like, like what the hell? Hey, like, I'll, I'll say too, you know these. I guess like, you know they're not going to be successful. Like no. it's going to take them. Of course, a basketball court's not very big. It's going to take security like four seconds to grab you and jerk you out of there. You know, and I'll tell you too, these protesters really are half-assing it because if you want to think about the well, they're real not protest in anything of significance. Yeah, and, and it's and it's you know and not to. Burning animals alive wouldn't be significant. Clearly, we're anti-burning animals alive here. <laughs> Talk yeah. dirt to me. But they're always protesting something super safe yeah. here in the U.S. And something that, yeah, I mean, that woman probably did get a misdemeanor citation or whatever for disrupting the peace or whatever. But they're, you know, like go to um, go to Saudi Arabia and be a feminist there and, and campaign for, for women's rights. 
Like, well, that's if you what, really want to make a difference, but no, 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 because they're, I don't know, they probably chop, chop your head, head off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go to go to China and protest for well, uh, religious freedom. But that's what I'm saying. Like you know, no, no, no. nobody's going to do that because then you might actually have consequences. Well, and, and but you and, might actually, but if you really wanted to change something, yeah, yeah. But that's I, I'm thinking about the, you know, I'm I enjoyed uh, the. Uh, politics aside, I enjoy Rage Against the Machine. They're one of my, uh, they make some bad to the bone music, terrible political views, absolute idiots when it comes to politics. But, you know, their, one of their albums was the famous picture of the monks that burned themselves alive. Yeah. And that's where I'm thinking, I'm like, you want to think about, like, you think you're some, like, tough protester. These freaking monks, like, Poured, poured gas on themselves, got down on the streets, like took knees, lit themselves on fire, and they like never even scream. You know, they just sit there and they burned alive. And it's like that that dude's a freaking that's protesting. Like, yeah. I mean, and he ain't gonna live to even see nothing happen. But that's his hope is that something changes. Yeah, so they just want attention. And again, we're we're sitting here giving it to them. But it, uh, yeah, that there's. You know, you could give all kinds of examples. You know, you know, the biggest hypocrites are a lot of like these artists and like, we're not going to perform in North Carolina anymore because they won't let men use the women's bathroom. Yeah. But, but I, we still do concerts in, in Beijing, in China, where <laughs> yeah. you know, they have literal labor camps for, you know, if you're a, of a religious, you know, human yeah. rights violations, like you could. We don't even know all the human rights violations because everything's censored out of there. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. We, well, we'll still go there and do a concert, but we won't do one in North Carolina because, yeah, they changed a bathroom. Yeah. Or they didn't oh, even change yeah. a bathroom law. They just made it a law. And, like, it's just all, it's all just, you know, theater. It is. But anyway, it is. Anyway, that's. You got the company today? Um, I can't. Well, you had one last week we were going to do that we stole. I stole it with Lodge uh, because uh, we had talked the cast iron. Crap one! I don't even remember what it was. Well, I can I, I can pull one out. Pull one out because I don't right. remember because well, I remember the cast iron, but I don't remember now. Well, of course, the cast iron was Lodge and and was it South Pittsburgh, Tennessee? Um, I think so. Yeah, it's in it's in Tennessee. Well, I my my leather bound book here. <laughs> you have many like leather a, bound books. Yeah, your yeah. house smells of rich mahogany. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> um, shout out to Ron Burgundy, but uh, Colonel Littleton. Leather goods, made in the USA, made in Tennessee. Dang well, man, Tennessee's uh, killing it. Yeah, I believe it's Linville, Tennessee. My mother-in-law gave me this, so shout out to her. Um, I remember if it was a Christmas or a birthday present, but um, they huh. make all kinds of awesome leather stuff. This is just a nice notebook, basically, but like wallets, briefcases, leather. What's bags. it called, Colonel? What Colonel Littleton? Yeah, let me get the name right, Colonel Littleton. Um, but yeah, pretty. I I just I bring it with me every week yeah i hadn't even i was like man we got to talk about them one day yeah so um especially being made in tennessee it's pretty awesome yeah colonel littleton i don't know i imagine they might have a store there in limville but um obviously i have a website um go on there check them out yeah let fine leather goods yeah you can you can be like ron burgundy how many leather bound was it? Is it leather bound novels or leather bound books? <laughs> leather I'm bound kind books. of a big deal. I have many <laughs> leather bound books in my apartment. Smells of rich mahogany. I, I don't know. Definitely the the love the good smell of leather. I was gonna but, say there's no way to beat the just fresh smell of leather. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, I think that's a good episode for you. We covered the weather and then the cover crops. Uh, hope y'all have enjoyed listening. As said earlier. Submit your questions. Uh, I don't care what the question's about. I don't care if it's about ag. I don't care if it's about um, turtles migrating east or something. I don't know. Well, and I had gotten a question or some of the topics might want us to hit on, but I just saw it last night. I'm going to have to research it a little more. I'm not an expert in that field. It's kind of one where I think we might even could get a guest on to help us break it down. It would be more of an expert. So, okay. So if, if you've asked a question and we haven't gotten to it yet, we, we will. 10-4. All right, guys, send your questions, talkdirtpodcast.com. Uh, we are on YouTube, Talk Dirt to Me Podcast, because there is a woman that's got a Talk Dirt to Me channel. So uh, Probably doing some cool gardening or something. I think I'm it's sure. gardening. Hey, check that out, too. Yeah. it's She's uh, 
She might be, well, maybe. I don't know if I've watched her stuff. Yeah, I guess I sounded vindictive uh, in that. But Talk Dirt to Me podcast, check us out on there. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Y'all have a good one.